Welcome to the RPG Podcast. And we are live. Oh, God, Pat! Presented by Sheep. A Time Wheel Production. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Robert Patton Global Podcast. I am here with a very special, interesting, unique guest, uh, William Henry, who, from what I know, you are a, an ascension, like a man's master, ascended master, <laughs> or you're, you're trying to become one, and you teach about uh, these types of philosophies of uh, the ancient historical uh, ascended masters like Jesus and whatnot. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been researching this subject for, well, since around the year 2000. I was uh, researching ancient like extraterrestrial involvement or possible extraterrestrial involvement in human affairs and came across these different deities in the Sumerian and Egyptian tradition. And what I started to notice is that there was a, a link, a symbolic link that, that connected those. And this was, uh, you know, you could call it a sheath, actually. It was a robe, a, a garment that is, in fact, described as a sheath, which is really good to with what you do. Um, and I started well, saying, well, wait a minute. Okay, so we've all got this robe or garment uh, that is a covering that makes them luminous, it makes them radiant, uh, gives them superpowers, and they could actually transmit this then to humans so uh, uh, a divine being could give to uh, a human being this this robe or garment and all of a sudden they could become luminous and radiant and have superpowers just like these these god beings and i realized then that this is all about uh what we today call ascension which is human transformation into a celestial being an angel this kind of thing and so that was uh, around the year 2000, and I've continued to, to study the subject ever since, and it's just really started to just ultimately has unfolded for me over these past two decades. I was watching some of your uh, teachings, uh, you know, one of your YouTube videos, and the art that you're interpreting is so beautiful. And, and uh, so there's something about that that I find you probably get a lot of joy from just even looking at the art. <laughs> Absolutely. It, yeah. it, and it's a constant search, too, because what I, uh, one of the, the key pieces that, that I came upon, there's, there's different ways to tap into our higher frequency self, our future self, our ascended self, whatever term people are comfortable with. They'll, they'll use meditation. They might use uh, entheogens. There's, there's different ways and pathways. But one that I really focused on that was unique is the use of art. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a conduit and mm -hmm. a portal. How could you look at a piece of art and somehow it in, inspire you? Well, everybody's had that experience. They've, they've had an emotional encounter. People tell me all the time they'll go to like to the Uffizi uh, Gallery in, in Florence and they'll get in front of a Botticelli painting and suddenly they're real emotional. And that's recorded. I mean, they, they know that that effect happens. So art can inspire us, but can it do more than that? And the answer is yes, because I started coming across, whether it be the Christian tradition with Jesus and his transfiguration or the Tibetan tradition with Padmasambhava, they all had this consistent message that these deities are avatars and they're energetic beings and they can transmit their, their vibration of purity or holiness through an image. So this is, this is why, in fact, there's been throughout history a prohibition against worshiping images or oh. idols because it's a direct connect you don't need a priest you don't need anybody in between you and this divine being you just need that image and to contemplate meditate and reflect on what you're seeing and there's a whole neuroscience behind all this it turns out of how we're activated by looking at these these images they're so beautiful and whoever painted them must have been on some other level right i mean how can you paint something so realistic and like perfect i i'm doing i'm taking a pottery class right now and i'm just trying to make uh clay pots and it's well i just i'm on level one so we'll give my i'll give myself some time on uh -huh. that to get better right. but 
you know, I've been on this path myself of trying to reach an ascended level of consciousness since around 2010, 12, 2012, because I was in the army and uh, kind of had a bit of an awakening, I guess, about the reality of what we were doing over there and started questioning it and questioning everything. And you were, where were you? I was in Iraq, in Iraq. Two, two times. Yeah. Thank so, you for but, the service, by the way. Oh, it, thank you. It's, it was an honor. Honestly, I proud, I'm proud that I did it. I'm happy I'm out now. Yeah. I'm doing other things, but it was a transformational experience, a growth. It was like, a, you know, um, a lot of our men in society today don't have that sort of experience that can, what's that, like a, just when you become a man, you know, right. Right. and I feel like the army was that for me, for sure. I was, and I was 26. I was still, I, w- I should have been a grown up, but I was still very childish at the time. And I feel like that really helped me realize my potential, you know, amongst my peers and testing myself on all these different levels of physical, mental, spiritual. And I came out on top I, I did really well. You know, I, I, I feel like I met the challenges and, and passed the tests. Yeah, That's it was, awesome. Way it to was go. super cool. And now I get to do this. And, you know, I own this underwear company, Sheath Underwear. But I love podcasting for some reason. And I love listening to guys like you talking about history and, and trying to um, – just interpreted and, and where we came from. You know, I took, I took some mushrooms the other day and I had this weird, um, like epiphany about pigs and apes. And I'm like, we're pigs. We're all pigs. You know, we have the same flesh color and a lot of the same organal stuff. Or DNA. Yeah. Yeah. But then that's where you come in with these teachings about aliens, probably mixing it up. And I don't know anything, obviously, other than, but it really resonated with me that we came from pigs, and it was. I started seeing everyone as pigs. It was weird. Wow. Uh, uh, so, you know, people talk about the aliens intertwining with like monkeys and stuff, and that's kind of how we came to being. You know, in the Bible, it says we're made from clay, and working with clay, my wife made a hand, and it looked like a human hand. It was really kind of freaky. You know, but it also could just be the random coincidence of molecules, whatever, connect, connecting, and then the first organism. It's slowly evolving over time. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Right. What do you think it was? What do I think it was that created human, that made us the way we are? Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't think it was random. Um, and part of the reason I don't think that is, one, um, my entry point into the question would have been through reading about ancient extraterrestrials, Zacharias Sitchin, Eric mm-hmm. von Connikin, so some of those really popular books inspired me. But then now we actually have the science that uh, has come in to show us how we are different. We are, we're, what, 99% the same as the primates, but that 1% difference brings us civilization. Mm-hmm. And that 1% difference is we have an activated neocortex, this, this new part of our brain, the, the new bark, as they call it. And it's a great mystery about how that neocortex came to be activated. We know it's responsible for all human civilization. Everything we do, math, science, music, art, is all attributed to our activated neocortex. And this happened around 200,000 years ago. Uh, it's what neuroscience is saying. And there's been debates about how this happened. Was it... Uh, Stimulation from cosmic rays, was it uh, eating meat, group sex, psychedelic? Uh, Psychedelics. Uh, I've heard things about they ate the mushrooms and that right. kind of... All, all of oh. those have been studied. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, But what actually happened, too, is that we had a fusing of a, of a chromosome. It was widely, it was presumed that we would have exactly the same number of chromosomes as, as the primates, 24. We don't. Mm-hmm. We have 23. Oh. What happened? Well, a t- two chromosomes were fused into one. This is called chromosome two. And this is what activated our neocortex. And 
Now, modern neuroscientific theory is saying this was not the product of evolution. This was not natural. This fusing of these chromosomes shows, shows evidence of genetic alteration. Well, who could have done that? Right. And that makes me think of this virus that was has been, you know, out over the past year and, and the manipulation of that and how they can tell that it was manipulated by human in, interaction or natural. And absolutely. And so they could probably tell the same with our DNA if it was a natural evolution or or somebody was tinkering with us. Absolutely. And we assume that our neocortex was tinkered with for a benevolent reason. I mean, mm -hmm. look at all around. This is the product of our life, right? Um, but you, you could also somewhat make a counter argument to that too, because I believe that this fusing of chromosome two represented the fall of man mm. in the book of Genesis story. We all know the story, Adam and Eve or the apple. Yeah, and Eve eats eats the apple, that, yeah. which symbolizes the wisdom of the serpent. And it's after that that she has the capacity for judgment. She suddenly knows the difference between good and evil, naked and, and clothed. Mm -hmm. so th the only way that that could be possible is with an activated neocortex, because that is the part of our brain that is responsible for making judgments. Being self-aware, maybe? Being self-aware. Other than that, it, we're, it's just all a blur. We're, we're all totally connected with all that is. There is no individuality. There's no William Robert. It's all just the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And we're kind of like, it's like we're trying to get back to that. We're all one, right? Yes. And, and that whole philosophy. And so it, it gets really, really deep, really quickly when you start thinking about the neuroscience of it and, and the, in, the implications. The other thing that uh, happened at that moment According to esoteric Judaism, I mean, the book of Genesis says that after Eve eats the wisdom of the, of the serpent symbolized by that fruit, which the Greeks are the ones that said it was an apple. Before that, we didn't know what kind of fruit it was. But in the book of Genesis, we're told that the Old Testament God, as punishment, evicts Adam and Eve and us from Eden and builds a gate at the east of Eden with the flashing flaming sword in the center and forbids us to return. And the second, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> I, didn't hear that. I didn't hear that part about the, the, the sword and the gate. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. At the east of Eden, there's this flashing, flaming sword with cherubim on either side representing this gate. It's like, and you'll see that in Christian art where we're, there's a gateway that we've left behind and Adam and Eve are, you know, in this real sorrowful kind of posture and everything. But the second thing that God did, in addition to that, building that gate, God also gave us coats of skin. And in traditional Bible teaching, that coats of skin, those coats of skin are some kind of animal skin, be it a bear skin or a goat skin or whatever. Mm -hmm. However, in the, and there's the sheath idea again, it's a covering. Mm -hmm. um, however, in the esoteric tradition, esoteric Judaism, the, the coats of skin are, are human skins. Because... Yes. We originally were not in flesh and blood bodies. We were in bodies made of pure light and pure love. And this, the esoteric quest is to return to our original divine state as beings of pure light and pure love. I mean, that makes me think of, you know, from whence we came for where, is to where we'll go. And we came from the light and we'll, we'll return to the light. Um, and this is our moment in a flesh body that, we, you know, we, we have whatever tests that we have to go through during this life to get to the next dimension, whatever right. that might be. That's the right. funny thing is we don't know where we're going or where we came from. Well, that's why we've got to study some of these ascension keepers, as I call them, because they they have laid a pathway for us. And, we, and they at least encourage us to identify with our future self, which is like our past self, of being of pure light and pure love. Well, and what about our higher self, our current higher self? You know, is there an angel lurking over us, kind of guiding, helping? And, and as, as far as in the teachings you've studied, like what's your perspective on that? Yeah, I did a, uh, I have a workshop available on my website, uh, called Awakening the Pearl. Yes, I just heard that. 
Okay, the, the pearl and the pearl. What is that? And tell, please elaborate. Sorry. So it's based on a, the Gnostic gospel called the Hymn of the Pearl or the Hymn of the Robe of Glory, and it was written around the second century A.D. by the first Christians, and it and it answers your question. It, it says, "Yeah, we all came from this original place of pure light and pure love, and the majority of our consciousness remains there." But a divine spark, a, a fragment of our higher self, our true self, incarnated on Earth and is responsible for manifesting this physical body. Yeah. For whatever reason, to work out karma, exploration, messenger of peace from our creator, just to have fun, whatever. Yeah, right. right? And the, yeah. And it's called the, the, the Hymn of the Pearl because the, the ultimate quest of the story is we've got to remember that when we incarnate in this material world that there is that higher self mm -hmm. that there is that original source place that we came from uh the real world and our our quest is to in the story is to find a dragon in egypt that guards this pearl which symbolizes our awakening and our our, our ultimate return to our our place of origin well, and I, I, I presume you have to slay the dragon. That's, and we all have our own internal or, or external dragons that we have to slay during this lifetime and conquer. And I think it's usually ourself and our own mind, because we're always typically, or at least I am, my own worst enemy. <laughs> I'm pretty good, but I, we all have our issues. I wrote these Absolutely. some some notes. Um, yeah, awakening the pearl. That's sweet. I. I was thinking of the pearl as like some some sort sort of uh, either your third eye or, or you know some level of consciousness. It is, it is. I mean, that's ultimately where it's located. I, I of course, located in the pineal gland. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. And that represents the gateway to returning to our our higher self and our our true self. So, I like I've left my body once or twice through uh, dimethyltryptamine, I think is how you say it. And it really opened me up to the idea that we can exist outside of the physical body. Because I, I was somewhere else, you know. Um, I went to another dimension. It seemed like a higher dimension that I had to go through all these doors. All these doors are opening. And then I come and, and I, I arrived in a glass house uh, looking scene where there were jesters drinking tea, very just like very civilized jesters drinking tea, like they were English. And but they they saw me come in, and they look. The guy looks over at me, and he went shh. And from that, he int I interpreted that he was saying, "We have this under control. You don't need to be here. Go back to your realm and do your work there. We got this under control." And it just really made me think. This podcast is brought to you by ohanakavabar.com. Now, ohana means family. But what is kava? Kava is a root from the South Pacific. It makes you calm and happy. Just go to ohanakavabar.com. Choose your favorite brew. They have many to choose from with more on the way. And I personally like the tincture. It tastes good. It gets you quick and you're calm and relaxed in a moment. It cools and calms the nerves. And I think you'll like it. Let them know we sent you. Support this podcast by supporting our sponsors and support this company. So go to ohanakavabar.com. Use promo code SHEATH. You're going to love it. It doesn't taste that great. But chase it with a nice pineapple. You will not be disappointed. Trust me on that. OhanaKabbabar.com. Ohana's family. Use promo code SHEATH. You're welcome. Last but not least, SheathUnderwear.com. The greatest underwear on the planet. The underwear of legends. The underwear that keeps your balls from sticking to your legs. That's right. This is the best underwear because it keeps your boys cool. Check out sheathunderwear.com. Back to the show. That I, I definitely left my body. I went somewhere else. They said, don't come back, you know, and I thought it just made me kind of 
lose a fear of death. Good. You know, I do yeah. kind of, I'm trying to fight aging <laughs> with different, I'm listening to different podcasts, like Joe Rogan. He's always talking about uh, anti-aging with uh, Dr. David Sinclair. He, he's, he's a very interesting, uh, he's working on anti-aging, but okay. as far as death is concerned, I feel like if you've lived a good life, and you are at peace with yourself and your heart is lighter than a feather, uh, you will get to go into eternal, you know, bliss, maybe nirvana. I'm not sure where it all goes, but like the Tibetan and Egyptian books of the dead are interesting little uh, image. There's like a sequence of images that you can see where it shows you the path of the body after we die and all that stuff is so fascinating to me it really is i mean the ancients have they've mapped out the geography of the afterlife i mean it is yeah. such a reality to them and we we kind of we don't dismiss that but we don't live our lives with that intention so beautifully expressed i want my heart to weigh less than a feather i mean it's so simple right yeah if you're consciously aware of that at all time and that that guard guides your behavior you're on your way that's nine tenths of it right there in my opinion be a good person. I'm I'm looking at your necklace, and it's it's like it's like a winged obelisk. I think. Can yeah, you... it's a winged scarab. It's Egyptian. Yeah, it's a yeah. symbol of uh, rebirth and resurrection. Okay, I, I remember they put them over the doorways or something there. Yeah, the, you'll see them over the doorways of the temples, and yeah, they're they're really striking. Very have beautiful. You, have you been to Egypt? Yeah. I've been to Egypt 23 times. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I, my, my wife and I lead tours uh, to Egypt. I have been going twice a year. Um, <laughs> going to be going back in November of 2021 and then hopefully in 2022 as well. Maybe I'll get to join you in 2022. <laughs> Please do. It's, a, it's life changing, it's transformative. Oh, I can't imagine. Well, like, I, can't, I can only imagine. You know, I take a lot of, I have, well, I have this Merkaba um, tattooed on my neck and the flower of life is like on all of our stuff in yeah. ancient, um, what is it called? Math, geometry, yeah. ancient geometry. I love uh, Drunvalo, Melchizedek. Absolutely. And I heard you in one of your recent, or not recent, so much recent, but one of your speeches talking about like Melchizedek. And I didn't really understand what that was, but you were mentioning him in like, in a conjunction with Jesus. Yes, can you? Uh, yeah, explain? Melchizedek is a figure that appears first in the Old Testament of the Bible. His name means king of righteousness. Nice. Melchi, king, Zadok, righteousness, king of righteousness. And he's a very strange figure because it's almost like he uh, pops out of the timeless realm or out of eternity. The Bible says he's born without mother or without father. Mm. What does that mean? Yeah. Like he just sort of you know, manifested, these beings do. I mean, so it's very possible. And I, I think of, um, I, I study figures, I call it hacking the continuum. History rises and falls, civilizations rise and fall and then rise again. And it, it something I've observed is that there seems to be individuals or even groups that somehow transcend each of those, those cycles. They're just always here, right? They're, right. They're, they live outside of time. They've mastered this realm. You can think of them as like bodhisattvas to the Buddhists. Um, they're, they're here to assist and to guide. And, and Melchizedek is one of those figures, in my opinion. And Jesus is identified in the book of Hebrews as a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And in fact, he is, he is portrayed as Melchizedek himself. So it's it's like he's one of these beings that exists outside of time or has hacked the continuum, as I call it. I need to get that code. Let me get yeah. the code for that. Yeah, yeah. And humans can. That's what's inspiring about it uh, is that ordinary guys, commoners, as they call them, uh, guys like you and me, you know, can do this. You don't have to be some kind of high high functioning super spiritual being or anything. You just have to have a desire to begin with. And you've got to commit to doing the, you know, doing the research, doing, and then living the, the life. It's, and then ultimately what that does is it puts you on the radar of these beings that can help you to complete your ascension. I see that over and over again 
in the stories of these ascension keepers or ascension masters. That they show up when you when you need them to to help hit that next level. Right. It's kind of like I, I sort of liken it to uh, getting a job at. Remember, we used to call it Kinkos. It's FedEx now, right? Yeah. You, you go to Kinkos and the manager interviews you. He doesn't want to know if you can invent a copier or build a copier or fix a copier. He just wants to know: Can you press a button and do you have good customer service skills or whatever? Because they can train you on on how to do everything else. And it's kind of that way I started seeing that in these Ascension stories, that most of them were were researchers, they're learning the geography of the afterlife, they're learning the big scope of what this is all about. And then uh, that prepares them for an encounter with a holy being. And over and over again, you you, you find them literally receiving the the rest of the codes or the, the books about Ascension literally being placed in their hand from one of these divine beings. And so I take a lot of comfort in that. It means I don't have to reinvent this whole idea. I just have to follow the path who have done it before me and know enough about it to to get on the radar of these beings. I like, well, what you just said about you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, you just follow the path and um, like it's already been, proven it's it's been laid out before you and you know typically this podcast is is has to do with success and the principles of success and a lot of those principles have been laid out before us as as in as far as you know what other successful men have done to get where they were and those common characteristics between them and and like how to acquire those for yourself right and that's been my journey along the way. Yeah. Um, you know, just like having a definiteness purpose and going above and beyond. There's a lot of uh, different, there's seven, there's so many principles. I, I always reference this book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon okay. Hill. Right. Yeah. And uh, my, what was my point with that? Just that, well, the point was actually, about like how these types of teachings can help a person achieve what they want in this life. Sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, cause looking at the question from a slightly different perspective, uh, rather than asking what is a successful person and how do I become successful? I ask the question, what is a fully functioning human being? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like uh, that. I mean, what, what is a fully functioning human being? Uh, and what what are some of the latent capabilities within our bodies that perhaps we can tap into? And this uh, took me back to a, a story. It's actually the this world's second oldest story. It's called the Epic of Gilgamesh. I read he's, that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So he's a, a mortal. Well, actually, he's told by a, a goddess that he's two thirds divine and one third human. And if he wants to get through the gate of the gods, ascend, which is ultimately all our goal, then he's going to have to clean up his act. Because if he tries to go through the gate, two-thirds divine and one-third human, it's going to be like walking into a blender. He's going to get his feathers ruffled, right? Wow. So wholeness is, our, is really our goal. He, she, she's saying you got to be fully divine. And divinity is symbolized by a circle. And a circle is 360 degrees. So what that what I derive from that story, and there's lots of things you can pull out of that story, but what I pulled out of it was that okay, uh, what if we all start out at about 240? Because that's two thirds of 360 is 240. Mm-hmm. Let's say we're all about starting out at 240, and we live our lives doing things mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally that are reflective of our belief that we're at 240 or 260 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the object is to figure out, well, what will I be doing when I'm at, say, 350, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, really pushing that needle at almost full divinity. What, what will I be doing mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally that I'm not doing now uh, when I'm at 350? And then we start doing those things, and yes. that's, that's, that's how we move the needle and, and get pushing it up to, to, to 350 or who knows, even beyond. I mean, a lot of people, men, are spent their lives toiling 
and the uh, you know in factories or whatever you know cubicles and don't have time to practice these techniques of ascension like so my advice is to get as rich as you can so you have as much time as you can to put forth and give back like i i'm i love you know think and grow rich people are like oh you just want to be rich no it's about being a whole human like there there's diet right what's that like Solomon, like King Solomon, richest man that ever lived, and also the wisest, too. Yeah, you don't want to be this, like, Scrooge, dude. I want to be loved by all and love all, you know, give and receive, give, 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 receive a little bit, a lot more giving than you're receiving, do more than is asked of you always. Mm -hmm. And that's how you kind of get ahead, because you want to get ahead so that you can start working on yourself, and, you know, if you're not doing it along the way. And I meditate, you know, that's one of my biggest practices every morning. For the most part, I get up and meditate. And I do different breathing techniques to <clears throat> just wake up. And, and you know, and, and that word, like wake up, being not being woke, big difference, <laughs> but awakened. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is my is that has has been my goal, and you know, I'm still. It's a constant effort, I guess, but. I do things that I feel are leading me in that direction. And as of recently, a lot of it it is playing new instruments, learning new languages, um, being more of a Renaissance man, like if you will, like draw, you know, art, I'm taking pottery, think of um, Da Vinci uh, and and how he lived. I mean, if anybody was awakened, he might've been one of them. Sure. Yeah. And, and like you said, just following, what people have done in the past and living lives like they live might help, you know, instead don't be, you know, doing cocaine all day or whatever, probably. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. yeah. No, treat your body like a temple. And yes, exactly. And again, it, it's all about that, that frequency thing. If, if frequency. Getting motivated by being that fully functioning, fully manifested you. And that means tapping into your future self. So we have to find a way to to build those neural circuits. And that's what you're doing with all, everything you just described, the new instruments, the uh, doing the pottery and that. You're building neural circuits that are reflective of your, your ultimate higher and future self. That's such a powerful uh, technique and activity that you're doing. Well, and, and then it made me think of frequency and, well, and you want to, put yourself in the presence of others whose frequency is high and, and, and righteous maybe. Right. And then you might attract more people who are on the right frequency and, and, and sort of uh, repel those who are from a more negative frequency, at least on your journey. I mean, if I, I tr- if you can help people, you know, do your best, but yeah. Usually the people that you can help are those that are looking for it kind of and want it. You know, you right. can't force your teachings on people because it doesn't work that way. Right. And I, I like to think of our bodies as sort of like those crystal bowls, right? Um, maybe you've seen like a Tibetan bowl or one of those. Oh, crystal I love bowls. those. Oh, the, the, the sound bowls? Yes, the sound bowls. Right. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're a great work of art to put them on the table there, but the magic happens when you pick up that tool, that dowel or rod or whatever, and strike the bowl and start doing something that brings that frequency out because that, that highest possible frequency version of you, Robert is within you and you got to find a way to bring it up and out to review. Yeah. And the way we do that is by changing what we're doing. Like, like you said, yeah, if you're doing cocaine all day, <laughs> that bowl's not going to ring or sing the way it's meant to, but no, putting into action all of those things you're describing is putting raising your frequency in that bowl your bowl is with all due respect it probably hasn't quite taken off right you know it it still can right and that's tremendously exciting because look at what you're doing now and just imagine when that when your frequency really takes off and uh the thing is that you mentioned too is that so important is that perhaps there's a frequency that that I'm resonating at that is a frequency that you need that suddenly takes your bowl and goes whoosh, 
you know, with the vibration. And that's, that's why it's so exciting. So absolutely, I totally go with what you said. It's about bringing your frequency up and also trying to, to be around those that have that higher frequency. I mean, I've heard financial people talk that, that your income is what, within 10% of your five closest friends? <laughs> that's pretty close, yeah. That's funny. So it, it's, a, it's about frequency. Yeah. I mean, and not just talking to you, I'm getting this like jitters or, or like kind of my stomach. It's like, um, it's like a weird vibration just coincidentally. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but I typically don't have this kind of weird feeling where, and that reminds me of like, Oh, show and, and these, um, prophets, whatever you want to call them, where they have all of these followers and that the followers speak of a level of consciousness they achieve while in the presence of these teachers mm -hmm. and i've yet i mean i've never you know gone and kissed anyone's feet or done anything kind of like that but i'm open to t you know just the teachings i, I want to achieve my full self kind of higher self potential yeah, yeah. and I, th I feel like I've fallen off a little bit in, in that search, although I've been doing the, uh, like some of, some of the practices as far as meditation and exercise and taking care of myself, trying to eat right and whatnot. Right. But I haven't watched some of these types of videos like you have in a while, and they really kind of like turn me on. It kind of gets me excited. You know, it's just yeah. very... Um, mentally stimulating and it makes you think of the what ifs mm -hmm. and i like that rather than just the typical everyday reality that we find ourselves i like a little bit of magic in life absolutely i mean what would life be like without that magic it it's it, it's what makes life worth living in my opinion and also it, it's very important mm -hmm. that we be doing this work now robert because our our world needs this this higher frequency more than ever and yeah. with the, the competition that we've got now from ai and transhumanism we're, we're losing our our soul connection as a society and moving into a, a technological version of ourselves that is robotic cyborgish anti-spiritual anti-soul it, it it can be pretty overwhelming yeah i hope I hope it goes in a direction where if we do merge with them, we get to keep our souls <laughs> and consciousness. Cause I like, I, I was speaking earlier about anti-aging and it has, and if we can, if I could get like all bionic parts, I'd be cool with that. Except for the, if I would, you know, if it, there was some kind of negative downside that I'm not aware of, you know, but my body's breaking down, you know what I mean? Right. So, right. Yeah, I mean that is the that is kind of the ultimate question. I've actually written articles about this. Can can human cyborgs ascend? Or what, did you, what do you think? I'm I'm still a little bit on the fence about it. I mean, and because here, here's what happened. Um, I was I've been writing about transhumanism well since 2002, but then really around 2011, 2012, I, I started hitting it really hard. And in 2013, I published a book called The Skin Gularity is Near, which is about uh, the big tech companies wanting to merge our skin with, with technology, right? nanotechnology and ultras genetically and so forth. And I had said, wait a minute, I, I, I really would counsel people to remain organic. Yeah, I like that. Stay as much organic. As, yeah. Okay. Because okay. that makes sense. It's like... Yeah. And then I was on a, doing a radio interview, and a woman called in, and she said, uh, you know, my, my son just got back from Afghanistan, um, but he left his legs and an arm there. Mm -hmm. Are you telling me, and he wears prosthetics, are you telling me that my son can't ascend? Nice. And I had to realize, it's like, yeah, that's Whoa. what I was saying, but th that's not what I meant. Right. And so really had to, to take a deeper look at that. I mean, can a, a human that is packed full of all this technology at, attain that, that spiritual ascension? And I would have to lean towards yes. Um, 
only with the precondition that you still, as you said, you still have the belief that you are a soul in the machine. Okay. Yeah. Because the big problem with a lot of big tech in that is they, they don't believe in this concept of the soul or ascension. They, 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 many of them operate from the, from the simulation theory argument that all of this is just a video game anyway. And that your soul is just information. It's all those pictures you put up on Facebook and Instagram and and all of that. And it doesn't matter if, if you are in one of these containers or if it's in one a robotic one, a robotic clone, or a synthetic avatar online, like mm-hmm. Samsung is now making, a replacement humans, it's still you according to their argument. And and I don't think that's correct. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, what was the what company did you say was making some kind of s- online simulated version of you? What'd you say? Samsung. Oh, Samsung. What? Yeah, they're called Neons, the replacement humans. They're Tell art- me. artificial humans that exist online. Oh my like, god! And it could look just like you, Robert. You could not tell the difference. They are so oh human god. looking that they'll fake you out. And, Whoa! And they. They have an existence online and will continue to have an existence. They will start to take on some form of sentience and consciousness. And I swear to God, I couldn't believe it. One of the engineers that is involved in developing these neons said, for now, they exist on the other side of the glass. Yeah. But that won't always be the case, he said. Because we can go on the other side and maybe they come on the outside. Exactly. Exactly. This is, to me, this is fake ascension. Okay, this is a mimicking or a mocking of the spiritual ascension, because, again, their belief is, is that we already live in a box. So why don't you just get out of this box and come live in our box online? No, thank you. No, thank you. (laughs) Hell no. Especially not Facebook online. Maybe I'll, I'll open uh, maybe i'll reserve a potential for a benevolent creator of an online <laughs> right i mean facebook uh, facebook horizons is a good example they've already got this online world all mapped out and they're starting oh to God. get people to create these cartoon avatar versions of themselves that, that mm. exist online yeah tr- yeah they run us online and it, and online is a dimension of reality it yes it is would appear <laughs> I mean, we, we already have two aspects of ourselves you have your physical self and then there's the version of yourself your data self that exists online that will yeah. be a portal that already will outlive your physical body right and even facebook you know you go on facebook in your settings it says yeah what do you want us to do with you after you're gone wow that's right they did that recently so i mean this is what we have to be thinking about here and it's not enough that we're trying to get into a higher spiritual realm now they're trying to coax us into this digital realm yeah well then you know there's all these the cryptocurrencies like everything is is online and i'm in i'm in the cryptos (laughs) I have a little bit here and there, uh, but that's just for financial yeah. investment with the way things are going with with uh, inflation and whatnot right. with America. A little freaky. Who yep. knows what's going to happen? You got to diversify. And I heard you talk. I heard you apologize uh, for talking about Bill Gates and Elon Musk and and like. Uh, Zuckerberg in a not so friendly way, but uh, are you still not cool with Elon so much? He's such a trickster. Um, yeah, we don't know. I wish he was Solomon. I mean, the richest man alive, and I wish he was the wisest too. Yeah, but he always does stuff that just. He, he, I mean, he was talking with Joe Rogan recently uh, and said there are no aliens. Mm. We know that's not true. Yeah, how could he even say that? How could he say that. So he said, "I would know if there were aliens." Okay, well, maybe, maybe, but yeah. there's definitely a presence here. And if they're not aliens, then they've been here for thousands and thousands of years, probably tens of thousands of years. And we're the interlopers. It's their world, and we're just passing through. Right. I we're mean, like an ant farm, potentially. Right. I mean, you've, you've, maybe you've seen uh, what's been happening with the Pentagon and the release of those Navy videos, the Tic Tac mm-hmm. videos, they're called, and uh, the release of the of uh, 
these un- unclassified documents with the U.S. government saying, yeah, we've got these all these 120 or so instances of unidentified aerial phenomena. Well, th- these are, are not unidentified. We have a pretty good idea what they are. The government is saying we don't know what they are, but they are clearly from a civilization that is way far advanced from, from anything we know. And I, as I've been saying lately, the technology that we see in those videos makes what Elon Musk has got look like a sparkler compared to a nuclear warhead. Right. Which means yeah. he's got nothing. Yeah, we have a long way to go before, and that's that can be exciting, you know, because we're just like touching the surface of potential of our capabilities as humans, you know, like humans in a thousand years might be able to, uh, you know, like just I would like to be able to be here and then be in Texas in like the next instant, you know. I forget what, what's yeah. that called teleportation teleportation that, yes right. with the mind you know the power of the mind and even do you know about the merkaba at all i do mm-hmm. can you because i have a cursory knowledge of it but it's like a uh spaceship in a way yeah it's uh well you have kind of two versions of it you have you mentioned drumbelow melchizedek earlier mm-hmm. uh he has uh his star tetrahedron model yeah. Yeah. where he, he describes it as an energy field that surrounds the body. Yeah. And that, that is one aspect of it. And then the ancients also talked about these chariots of the gods or celestial thrones. They call them Merkabas. And these are essentially chairs, right? They're portrayed as chairs, as thrones right. that you can sit on and literally – uh, the earth moves beneath you, but you don't move at all. Oh, and that's how you go from point A to point B. You just go blip, blip. Yeah. And in fact, I mentioned those Tic Tac videos a moment ago. Engineers who are studying those videos cite those as examples of wormhole-type technologies. These, yeah. these, they have the ability to manipulate space-time. I believe that they're Merkabas is, is what we're looking at. I, I, I think those videos are of an ancient race that has always been here, and it, it's an example of that uh, spiritual Mer- Merkaba technology. I like to believe in stuff. You know, like some people are just like very, if they can't see it, it's not real. But I, I my imagination runs wild, and, and, and I think that like, all these things are possible and I want them to be possible because I don't, I want more wonder in the world and, and answers, you know, ultimately do we need the answers of where we came from and where we're going? Maybe that's part of our existence. I think we do. Uh, It would help. Especially now, because again, with simulation theory, they're trying to take all that away. Uh, Nick Bostrom, Elon Musk, again, he talks all about this, that this, this is, this is the only reality. You, you don't exist outside of this game. That's their argument. Right. And I don't buy that. I don't either. But yeah. spiritually minded people like you and I have to take up that challenge and say, well, you're wrong and here's why. Okay. We have to show that there are realities beyond this one that we actually came from and we can connect with. And this is why, in my opinion, Again, the Tic Tac video are so important because the engineers, again, who are looking at those videos are saying those are projections from a higher reality. Those those craft are material, but it's not like you could crash into one. They are right. they are coming from that higher reality. Well, I'm I'm all about that because I want I don't want to live in a world where we're told this is just a video game and you have no existence beyond this game. Yeah, when it's over, it's game over, the lights go off. Exactly. I mean, imagine a a civilization or a culture based on that premise. That's what we're creating right now, and and it's it's horrifying to me. Yeah, I mean, there's no hope for the future. Uh, There's no, like, I mean, you can have morals and be a good person even though you don't believe in an afterlife, but having an afterlife to look forward to and knowing that if I behave properly the afterlife is going to be that much better, I feel is um, kind of a, and it would help people incentivize them to be better. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and some so, people need that. They do need that. We all yeah. need that. We all need that. And yeah. so that's why we have to, with what you're doing, what I'm doing, we're bringing that message to people saying, hey, uh, we've got to hold on to this. We don't want this taken away. I mean, no. maybe yeah, you can take away capitalism. You can take away some of the other things they're taking away now. But, but don't mess with that. That is inviolate. Okay. Um, and this is what makes me think that sometimes AI, transhumanism, simulation theory, that there's some kind of like real cold alien thought form that is uh, somehow infiltrated the human mind and getting us to believe that. They just feel like pretty reptilian, these guys, a little bit, like especially Zuckerberg and, and Bill Gates for some reason. I happen to not hate Elon because I just think he's kind of funny. But uh, uh yes. and I think he's he's fucking I think he's messing with people sometimes. And I'm not sure. And I'm because then there's yeah. another guy we work with named Michael Malice. Have you heard of him? Yeah. Okay, he's a political kind of pundit. He wrote a bunch of really good books. His most re recent book is the Anarchist Handbook, but <clears throat> he was telling me his because he came from Russia. He was born in Russia, and his father, his grandfather, was in the Russian Navy, and he said they saw stuff like this all the time. These TikTok, and there was no way of reporting it back then, I guess. But it was told to Michael Malice, you know, like. This is a reality. These things exist. You right. just, uh, we can't pin them down yet. And maybe we never will. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's clearly being bumped up. It's now in yes. mass consciousness. Millions more people are looking at this question and thinking about it. Good. Uh, serious stories on news programs all over the world. That's a paradigm shift. Yeah, and I, and and it, well, and a conspiracy theorist would be like they're trying to distract you from a, something else that's happening, and that may be the case, and I don't know, but um, it could be. But I think this is both. the thing that's happening because if we can if we can answer that question, wow, now we're we're in a whole different whole different ball game. Oh yeah, that would just open up the universe to our absolutely um, and, within our reach. And I'm convinced there's a spiritual component to it. And in fact, the, the U.S. government has admitted to that. Lou, Louis Elizondo, who was part of the, the U.S. government program in the Pentagon that was looking at these things, said, yeah, that we looked at the spiritual nature of these craft. And th that's all he said. He didn't elaborate. But of course, there's a spiritual component to it. I, in my view, they're, they're friendly. They, we've been seeing them for at least 70 years, and they've, they've never harmed any humans that I'm aware of, and, and right. especially these military sightings. They could easily do anything they want uh, to any of the uh, navies or air forces on this planet, but they, but they haven't. Yeah. And I like the analogy Rogan gives about – because, like, I think Neil deGrasse Tyson was saying, like, nobody would care. They wouldn't they – wouldn't, come and look at us and if they did they would just destroy us or something and rogan was like maybe they just want to observe like we observe in nature sometimes that's fascinating maybe we're somewhat fascinating to them well, and we are yeah. yeah and and they 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 obviously need us for some reason uh whatever it is if you're saying it's entertainment or whatever it could be for the advancement of their species even we don't know um, there's, these are some of the great questions that are, that are now before us. And it's exciting that we're, we're able to have this conversation. I love it. And I want, I want to, this is the kind of interview I want to be doing kind of, I, I, I like mine with Michael Malice and all the other guests that I've ever had. I love them, but this is so fascinating to me and so intriguing that I want to continue these types of conversations. Um, and we're going to continue this. I, I don't know how much time you have, but I, I wanted to get into like your daily practices mm -hmm. to live in a way that, you know, you, how would you recommend others live to kind of become more ascended or try to reach ascension? Well, it's, a, it's what I was saying earlier, that if we think of ourselves as on a quest for wholeness and, yeah. and holiness, which is equatable with righteousness, then we all individually have specific things we know we need to be doing to to move the needle from that 240 mark where I, I talked about up to closer to 360 and yes 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 it, often it's things that we procrastinate 
and we, we think, oh, I'll get to that once I've achieved a level of financial success or when I have more time or whatever. But usually those are the things that we most need to be doing. So one of the first things I encourage people to do is to do some of the things you've been procrastinating on. Because that's, that's often your higher self. You're saying no yes. to your higher self when, yes. when, you, when you're procrastinating. And because I know you would agree your higher self is that part of yourself that can see on down the road, can see the future and knows what you need to be doing. And if you listen to that voice, it's going to open those doors for you. But we've all had experiences where we don't listen and we regret it. Oh, yeah. Right. That's one of the principles of success as far because like you get this inspiration to make your life what you want it to be. And you're like, ah, but I can't do that or I'd never be able to be good at that. And, you know, it took me 10 years with no pay to get Sheath to where it's at, which is, you know, it's doing very well. And, uh, but most people would have quit before 10 years, probably. Yeah. But most people aren't you. Right. And so now you're, you're the light bearer. You're the inspiration saying, you know, follow me. It It can be done. I try to, that's what I try to say. Like, I'm not, I'm just a very average kind of a guy. Uh nothing particularly special my iq or i'm not tall i'm not extra strong like nothing other than i feel like i have a a, my heart my will my desires is is pretty strong and i like will fight to the death in in, in metaphorically um to get what i want i mean you know know, get what you want i guess ultimately yeah you said yes too that's another thing you said yes to this and now you're look at look at the reward and there's even more to come this is just the beginning it sounds like to me i agree i'm excited about the future and i want to share my ex- kind of a journey my knowledge and teachings that i've learned that were that helped me get to where i'm at and share that with others because i feel like what goes around comes around and the more you give the more it comes back to you and that's a little bit selfish i guess if you think about it that way but well, then the more I can, then the more I get, the more I can give, and the more I can give. So what's wrong with that? I'd rather have you have it than say Bill Gates. Yes, Billy boy, Michael Malice would say you're white pilled because you're optimistic about the future. If you're black pilled, you're negative, and if you're blue pilled, you're be, you're you're like. Um, Whatever they tell you, they, the media and the government, you believe. If you're red pilled, you're like you see the truth. You you can see when they're telling you something, and you know it's bullshit, or at least fishy. And this whole thing from the beginning, I was like, something is funky with this, and I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna stay yeah. back and watch because I live in the mountains, and I mean, I live in a very small town and I don't have to, I don't get out into society very much. So I was able to just stay away from everything and I'm just doing that. What were you going to say? Well, what I was going to say is that when, when all this really started happening back again, March and April, I, I wrote a couple of articles about it and I tried to, as you say, take the white pill and be hopeful and optimistic about it because the word COVID means crown. Oh yeah. And we've definitely yeah. been crowned. I mean, we've been sucker punched. That's what crown means. Uh, you know, when a baby Whoa. first pokes out of his mother's uh, birth canal, you see the crown, you've been yeah. crowned, right? Wow. And we're being reborn now. And the object is, is to use this time. There's a lot of energy out there. It, it's pretty dark, but it's also, a, at its core, it's negative, or, or rather it's uh, neutral. And so we want to just use the energy of the time to, to activate ourselves. And so if COVID means crown, then we got to start putting on our, our real crown, which is our ascension intelligence in my vernacular. Start thinking at that higher consciousness level in order to navigate through this. And this is going to mean not succumbing to the fear and, and not succumbing to the, the, the forces that are out there right now. And so, I mean... So by seeking out this higher knowledge, like that's the, that's the start. It's like seeking out these practices and you'll, you'll find the answers as you go along the journey. Absolutely. The, 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 the players will come along, the, the information will come in. If we, and because if you're not on this path, it's not going to come to you, right? right. So you got to get on that path to that, that higher frequency version of yourself 
and knowing that it's going to bring those higher frequency people and ideas and situations into your life. I love that. Is um, are there, there's so many religions, you know, and you speak of Christianity and Buddhism, a little bit of Tibetan. I'm not sure yeah. what that religion would be, but do, when it comes to Hin, well, we'll just stick to Muslim. Um, Islam, they're all kind of connected. Yeah. I mean, at some point, are there any of these teachings from Islam that you have taught or researched just out of curiosity? Um, very little. I mean, yeah. some. Uh, I just haven't gone too deep into it. Uh, going to Egypt, I, I have many Muslim friends and we, we talk about these things. And good, yeah. Their intention is the same as mine, which is to live the most authentic life from my true, true nature. Mm -hmm. Recognizing all this is illusory and I, I need to get in to connect with my core self. And that's the, the, the essential uh, center of Tibetan Buddhism as well, is that we, we want to connect with our true nature, our, our Buddha nature, they would call it, our enlightened self, and live from that perspective. That's kind of my religion air quotes would be like buddhism and i was raised christian and i don't get why people have a problem with christianity i'm like wasn't jesus a good dude i mean regardless of whether you think he was the one true god or not like the teachings still hold true really? right yeah it's like why do you have a, like people get oh it's too jesusy it's too like preachy i'm they i can't imagine the experiences they've had in their life with the church or with uh-huh authority yeah. figures and that kind of thing that's usually what it's about right yeah and like the whole, like atheism is just believing that there's no god you still have a belief right right there's, so who you feel, like whatever you're picking a side i'm gonna choose the optimist side that there is life after death and it's gonna be awesome yeah and if it's not then I, and I fooled myself this whole life. What did I lose? <laughs> I totally agree. That, that is my philosophy to a T. Exactly. What have you got to lose? Right. And there's a lot of stories, though, from people like people, life after death, psychedelics, dreams. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And so I say go for it. Be your most high frequency self you can possibly be. And if you don't like it when you're up at, say, 350 out of 360, Go back to doing what you were doing when you were at a hundred. Right. <laughs> you probably yeah. to do that though. No, they're they're not even they're like they don't even want to try. And I feel like there there's a part of your brain where if you believe in something, it like it let the you know they light, it lights up. I feel like yeah, I've, I've heard of these tests where the prayer fact uh, faith and prayer part of your brain lights up during these uh, meditations or prayers. And, you know, if you're not doing that, you're not using that part of your brain, you're not fully activating. Right. It produces all reactions, releases hormones, the whole works. Right. <sighs> They're just being negative. But right. maybe, maybe that's the balance of humans on Earth. You know, some of us are going to be positive and some of us are going to be negative and it's true. It's like a, uh, the symphony. You know, you, you can't all be flutes and violins. You got to have that deep bass drum and that tuba. <laughs> <laughs> You're super cool, man. I really like I really like talking to you here. I, I, I'm going to be respectful of your time. Thank you and, so much. Yeah, I'd love to come back and talk again anytime. Oh, we have to. We have to. Well, we won't do it too often, but if you don't mind, like, you know, once a year or something, that'd be really cool. Anytime. And if you have any friends that you think would be interested in coming on here and talking to little old me about these things, I would love it. And it would really just excite me beyond belief to get to be able to talk to more people. Be in my this realm. Pass, yeah. pass the along for sure. Really enjoy thank, our time together. Thank you, William Henry. Google him. He's on YouTube. He's on Gaia. And uh, just an awesome guy. He's certain he's trying to figure this shit out for all of us and himself so <laughs> give him a listen it's fascinating thank you william thank you robert all best blessings to you thank you everybody for listening all the best blessings to you and everyone out there 
We're out. Robert Patton Global, sheathunderwear.com. You know what it is. And we'll see you next time. Peace.